I'm Laura GB and in this video today we're going to have a look at a new feature in Power BI that arrived in the November 2019 update which was the decomposition tree. Let's start in Power BI and we're going to go and firstly I'm going to show you how to turn it on. So we go to the file tab and we go to options and settings and we go to options. And in the options pane, there is a way to turn on all the new features. So if you go to preview features, so you can see at the bottom here, there is the enable the decomposition tree. You need to turn that on and click OK. I've brought in house data prices from the land registry in the UK. They offer all the, all the sales that have happened in the last year. I've added a measure which is taking the average of the amount a house is sold for. Okay. And I've also, off the new measure tools ribbon, I have formatted that measure to be currency. Okay, to show pounds. So let's get on and have a look at our decomposition tree. So I'm the decomposition tree can be found over here in the visualizations pane. If I click onto there, there you are, it's added it. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger to fill the page. So the fields that you need to fill things into. Okay, so there's an analyze and that's looking for some value to um, analyze across and explained by various things. So I'm going to bring in the measure that I've got for the average price and put it into analyze. And you can see if I look over on the left hand side here, it's showing me the average price. So there we are, um, £294,000 is the average price of a house in 2018 in the UK. So coming back over to the visualizations pane, we can start to add things to our explain by. So I'm going to bring in what kind of property was it? What region of the UK was it in? What kind of contract, freehold or leasehold was it? And was it a new build? So I've dragged all those into the explain by. If we head back now to the decomposition tree, nothing's changed yet. But we can add in the different ways of drilling down through our data. So there's a little plus symbol. and I'm going to click on there. And you see I can pick how do I want to split it. So maybe let's go for property type. And there you are, you can see that the detached is 400,000-ish, all the way down to a terraced house at 236. Okay, I can then click on another plus, And I can choose, well, let's go and see if new build makes a difference. And it expands the one that you've selected into yes or no. So a no is giving a higher price. We could then click onto there and we could have a look at what kind of contract. So is it a freehold or a leasehold contract? And there we are, not surprisingly, the freehold is the more expensive one. Okay, so there we are. We can click on another section such as flat there and it shows you the split that's happening there. I can click on the yes or the no on there and it works through. Okay. We can also bring in a slicer. So I'm going to bring in a slicer and put into that slicer the region. So there we are, all my regions of the UK. I can click. So let's go for down in the southwest of our country to Cornwall. And there you are, you can see how the house prices change. The average price is different, we're on to detached, etc. And you can see how you can move through those. So let's head up north to Darlington. And you can see how they change as you switch through the slicer and how that all works. The highest one's always at the top of the splits so that you can see the things moving around in different orders, etc. etc. So that's dealt with a, bit, a fantastic way to drill through your data. 
okay and that's on our first page so let's move on to another page and let's look at it a slightly different way and what we're going to do is bring in a decomposition tree again and let's bring in the average price again and this time I'm going to bring in for the explain by I'm going to go for region I'm going to go for new build and I'm going to go for a contract and on the plus that's in here rather than picking one I'm going to pick high value so this is the little light bulb there shows that some AI is happening behind the scenes and there you are it's showing the biggest slicer there that makes the biggest difference is Greater London so the regions so sure enough living in Greater London is ridiculously expensive so I click the plus on there and I'm going to pick high value again and there we are it's a freehold in London which isn't that surprising really I click a plus again and high value and there you are I get new build is a no so some of older properties freehold in London are some of our most expensive properties in the UK so well for 2018 so I'm going to click off there and show you how some of these um, decisions up here being made are changing how it's different to the other one we've just the other decomposition tree we've just constructed so I'm going to bring in a slicer and this slicer is going to be property type so let's make that show up a little bit better than that let's quickly change that slicer to be buttons and maybe make it a bit smaller so if I click on detached the leasehold comes through first and new build is a yes but if I click on a flat they the contract switches over if I click on to terraced the new build and the contract switch places so new build is a more important factor to so switch back you can see how it switches over those two columns now region stays the same um, some of the other some of the other regions below swap around in order but new build and contract is swapping over left and right based on what property type I've selected okay the flexibility of this is that consumers of your report can tweak things so I'm just going to show you how you can stop them tweaking things so on the fix tab here if I click onto my decomposition tree if you hover over one of the titles at the top here you can see a little lock so if I lock that level okay ready now I'm going to go and I'm going to publish my report so if we go and have a look at our report in the Power BI service I can click into there so whether I'm looking at it through the workspace or through the app this is true okay on my first fixed page if you look at the top here there's a little lock next to property type as we turned on but next to new build and contract a little crosses so I can actually remove those and choose it to be different things that are coming through I can even pick the high value low value and it will bring things in for me okay so I can change it if I click reset to default it will take me back in there was a filter in there already so it's kept the filter etc and it's put back in the columns as part of the default if I go and have a look at the AI page it still reacts in the way that you expect the columns will switch round etc interestingly there isn't a lock at the top here and I can click on the little um, light bulb and it will no longer be AI so that actually I can turn around and go do you know what I don't want those to be AI at all I want them to stay the same and to be fixed but again I can reset to default and it will go back to how it was so not only is it quite a good flexible 
way of drilling through, but you actually give your consumers of your report a flexible way to look at it as well. Stepping back into Power BI for a moment, one interesting feature, which I'm not totally sure whether it's going to stay the same, but it's the way it works at the moment, is if I bring in a card onto my report, and what I'm going to do into there is I'm going to count. So let's bring in property type and change that first to a count. So there we are. That's how many properties were sold, domestic properties, not um, business ones. I've excluded those. But if, and if I click onto a filter on the slicer, as you would expect, it slices. But if I click on to a part of the decomposition tree, it doesn't, which is fine and works okay, but it's quite not what you normally expect in Power BI. So if I now click on to freehold, so I've gone for Wokingham, I've gone for freehold, still not affecting my counter property type until I click on the final one. So if I click on yes, now it suddenly does. And you can see all the filters have all gone pale. So it's showing that there's a filter applied and I can click through. But if I go back to clicking onto one of my regions again, take some doing sometimes to unclick it, um, it goes back to not being filtered at all. So that's an interesting twist to understand um, and how that works. So one of the nice features is to use bookmarks that work quite well to give you a good way of navigating to some set selections on your decomposition tree. So just a very quick example here. If I go to view and I go to bookmarks, I can navigate down. So let's go for Hertfordshire. Let's say that's of interest to our team and I can click into here and I can add in a bookmark, rename it to be hearts. I can then go, well, actually I can scroll up. You see that they've got scrolls to go through long lists. So I can scroll back up and let's go for Buckinghamshire, a county just next door to, to Hertfordshire. And I'm going to add in another bookmark and call that Bucks. And I can switch between them now that will take me through Hertfordshire and Buckinghamshire. And I could add in further ones to make that work. OK, so we can use bookmarks, we can use slicers um, and we need to understand how selecting things in our decomposition tree affects other visuals. So that was my video on having a quick look at the decomposition tree and how it works. If you haven't already, please press subscribe. Take care now. Mm -hmm.